Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to take part in the fourth edition of the Ukraine Reform Conference. I thank Lithuania for organizing this important event. Ukraine decided seven years ago to fundamentally change its orientation and embark on the course of political association and economic integration with the European Union. Romania was the first EU member state to ratify the association agreement between EU and Ukraine, continues to be a strong supporter of the European aspirations of Ukraine, based on a profound reform process with obvious benefits for the people, the country and its neighborhood. As a neighbor and active EU member state, Romania will continue to stand ready to provide help and assistance to Ukraine based on its own transition experience. Romania also brings additional added value through recent experiences, such as, for instance, exercising the role as a lead nation of the NATO Trust Fund for Cyber Defense as a major contributor between 2014 and 2017 to the OSCE Special Monitoring Mission, currently with a contribution of more than 30 monitors, and to the EU Advisory Mission for the Reform of the Civil Security Sector. Not least as a neighboring country, we share with Ukraine security interests in the Black Sea. Moreover, as current presidency of the Community of Democracies, Romania is committed to support the efforts for strengthening the resilience of democracies and their capacity to deliver for their people. Distinguished audience, there is a widespread recognition of the importance of structural reforms in order to keep pace with various trends in economy, technology and demography. But it is much more complicated to promote such reforms on the backdrop of a military conflict and continuous hybrid threats as it is the case of Ukraine. We should all be aware that the challenges Ukraine is facing have security implications well beyond the Black Sea region. At the same time, the security situation has a direct impact upon issues related to economic development, regional connectivity, energy security, human rights and living standards of the population. Peace and security are both a necessary precondition and the lasting consequence of truly sustainable development. As a sign of Romania's deep concerns about the threats put by the Russian military build-up, Ukraine was invited for the first time ever to the trilateral meeting of the foreign ministers of Romania, Poland and Turkey, which I hosted on the 23rd of April this year in Bucharest. At the same time, Romania promoted a strong language concerning Ukraine's security interests at the summit of the Bucharest 9 format, hosted by the President of Romania on the 10th of May, which also benefited of the participation of President Biden. Romania also supported Ukraine's aspirations at the recent NATO summit. I use this occasion to reiterate Romania's unwavering support for the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine, as well as our commitment for the non-recognition policy of the illegal annexation of Crimea. In this context, I would like to also put emphasis on the subject of protracted conflicts and their deep negative implications on the well-being of the citizens and the prosperity, security and positive development of a country. Romania attaches strategic importance to this discussion and we are very active and vocal of putting it high on the agenda at European, but also at Euro-Atlantic level. I recall that based on my initiative endorsed by 10 other EU member states at the Gimnich meeting in Lisbon that took place on the 27th of May, we had insightful discussions about the concrete instruments which the EU can use to tackle the protracted conflicts in the Eastern neighborhood. And as a first concrete follow-up to the discussion we had in Lisbon, together with my colleagues from Austria and Lithuania, and in coordination with High Representative Joseph Borrell, I realized a successful regional tour in the three South Caucasus countries between the 24th and the 26th of June, strengthening the determination of the European Union to be more actively involved in the process of settling the protracted conflicts in this region. Ladies and gentlemen, the most important aspect we need to tackle during this conference is how to make reforms more efficient. Romania believes that Ukraine should step up the pace of reforms aimed also at generating an inclusive society where the rights of persons belonging to the Romanian minority are respected. In this, re in this regard, I would like to make a few points. First, I would highlight the central role of the association agreement with the European Union, including the deep and comprehensive free trade component whose potential must be fully used. Romania welcomes the efforts towards further sectoral integration with the EU, building on Ukraine's economic potential. Second, the reform should be centered on citizens and effective implementation of reforms is essential 
to meet their demands. The approaches must be inclusive and benefit all citizens, which in turn will bring cohesion and enhanced societal resilience. We cannot ignore the importance of investment in human capital to build the necessary skills through a qualitative educational system. More chances, not less, should be provided to any student, irrespective of ethnicity and language. We are all aware of the difficulties of the transformation process, but the results will be more sustainable if the population is continuously engaged. Third, notwithstanding financial constraints, investing in infrastructure is critical for future growth. As a neighbor country, Romania is ready to use opportunities to enhance the physical connectivity with Ukraine. Fourth, delivering on development priorities requires effective state institutions. Besides effective market institutions, a transparent and accountable state administration is the linchpin of development. We stand ready to continue to provide assistance in different fields, mainly on anti-corruption and justice reform, according to Ukraine's need-based requests. At the same time, Romania continues to place solidarity at the core of the fight against pandemic, and in this regard has provided help and assistance to neighboring countries. I would only mention that on the 28th of May this year, Romania provided to Ukraine medical help, protection gear and sanitizers worth more than 1 million euro. I am also pleased to announce that the Romanian government approved on the 16th of June a donation of more than 100,000 doses of anti-COVID vaccine to Ukraine. I will, and on this positive note, wish you all fruitful debates. Thank you all for your attention.